Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about forceps delivery and vacuum extraction delivery. Both the forceps delivery and the vacuum extraction delivery are types of assisted delivery in which we use a device, so either a forceps or a vacuum suction to deliver the fetal head. Both these devices are used for a cephalic delivery. So when the baby comes head first, but labor is not progressing. In the first part of the video, we will talk about forceps delivery. In the second part, about vacuum extraction delivery. A forceps is a metal device consisting of two blades. It kind of looks like a spoon or salad tongs. There are different curvatures and sizes of the forceps but the anatomy of the forceps is always the same. It consists of a handle with which the doctor guides the forceps, a lock to bring the blades together and prevent them from separating, and two blades that have each a cephalic and a pelvic curve. The cephalic curve is the one that is placed on the fetal head, the pelvic curve is placed on the maternal pelvis. There are different levels on which we can use the forceps during delivery. Depending on how far the baby has descended, we can divide the use of the forceps into high forceps, mid forceps, low forceps and outlet forceps. Currently in most countries only the low forceps and outlet forceps are used. A high forceps is when the fetal head is unengaged. A mid forceps is when the fetal head is at station plus 2 cm or above, but the head is engaged. A low forceps is used when the fetal head is between station plus 2 cm and the pelvic floor. An outlet forceps is used when the fetal scalp is visible at the exit of the birth canal without separating the labia of the patient. We can either apply the forceps with rotation of the baby or without rotating the baby. The different types used for a low forceps are the Keyland forceps that enables rotation and traction of the fetal head, the Simpson forceps that only allows traction of the head but without rotation, and the Barton forceps that is only used for an occiput transverse position of the head and the Piper forceps that is used for a forceps application of a baby in breech presentation. What are indications for the use of a forceps? We can use a forceps to assist a vaginal delivery when the mother becomes too exhausted from delivery to continue the bearing down efforts. We can also use it in cases of labor dystopia, so prolonged labor. In case of women who are giving birth vaginally for the first time, this is the case if the second stage of labor takes longer than 4 hours with regional anesthesia or longer than 3 hours without regional anesthesia. Or in women who have given birth vaginally before, where the second stage of labor takes longer than 3 hours with regional anesthesia or longer than 2 hours without regional anesthesia. In both cases, so maternal exhaustion and labor dystopia, it indicates that the pushing of the mother is either insufficient or that the contractions of the uterus are insufficient. What kind of prerequisites are necessary for the use of a forceps? We can only use a forceps when there is no cephalopelvic disproportion. A cephalopelvic disproportion means that the baby's head is too big to fit through the pelvis. In this case we have to do a cesarean section. A vaginal delivery won't be possible. Also important is that the cervix is fully dilated to 10 cm and that the membranes are ruptured so that the water broke. That usually happens during the first stage of labor. The fetal head also has to be engaged, 
which gives time for molding of the head to occur. In molding of the head, the cranial bones of the baby are pushed towards each other to make the head smaller, which helps it to fit through the birth canal. We also have to know how heavy the baby is and in which exact position it is located. In cases where the baby is over 4 kg, we call it macrosomia. In this case, we have to do a cesarean section. The baby usually won't be able to fit through the birth canal. We also have to make sure that the maternal pelvis is adequate for vaginal delivery. That includes the exclusion of uterine fibroids, an active infection with herpes simplex or HIV. Also, there can't be any anomalies as a transverse vaginal septum. After that, we have to make sure that the mother received a regional anesthesia, so either a spinal or epidural, and that the bladder is empty, either with an in and out catheter or by voluntary spontaneous emptying of the patient herself. Important is of course also that a patient knows that a forceps use is planned, that she is informed thoroughly and has given her voluntary and full consent. What are contraindications for the use of a forceps? Absolute maternal contraindications are when the cervix is not fully dilated to 10 cm, when the membranes are still intact, the fetal head is not engaged, there is a cephalopelvic disproportion or if we don't know the exact fetal position. Basically, whenever any of the prerequisites is not given, we cannot use a forceps. There are also absolute contraindications from the side of the fetus. Those include a confirmed bleeding disorder, such as hemophilia A or B, thrombocytopenia, or von Willebrand disease. Also, osteogenesis imperfecta is an absolute contraindication. Relative contraindications from the side of the mother are malpresentation or connective tissue disorders, such as the Marfan syndrome or Ehler-Danlos syndrome. In case of a connective tissue disorder, the risk of maternal birth trauma is severely increased. Relative contraindications from the side of the fetus are prematurity or macrosomia. What complications can occur with the use of a forceps? We divide the complications into maternal complications and fetal complications. On the side of the mother, primarily birth trauma is a complication. That can occur in the form of a tear in the perineum either the muscles of the pelvic floor or the wall of the rectum. In around 10% of forceps deliveries, a third or fourth degree rupture of the perineum occurs. That's around three times as often as in an unassisted vaginal delivery, so without the use of a forceps. After the delivery, also urinary incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse are more common. This problem is often occurring after a rupture of the perineum. If you want to know more about urinary incontinence, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. The complications on the side of the fetus are also usually birth traumas. They are mostly mild and temporary and resolve by themselves. Those birth traumas can be wounds by the use of the forceps on either the head or the face. Also skull fractures and bleeding within the skull can occur. A brain hemorrhage is luckily a rare complication, but it can be life-threatening. That's why the baby has to be kept under special attention of doctors for days to weeks after a forceps delivery. Another complication is a facial nerve palsy. In this birth trauma, the facial nerve gets damaged by the use of a forceps and can lead to temporary muscle weakness or paralysis. 
it usually gets better within the first month of life of the baby. In the next part of the video, we will talk about vacuum extraction delivery. The suction device used in this type of assisted delivery is either a metal or a plastic cup that is placed on the head of the baby. There are either mechanical or electric types of vacuum. The indications for the use of a vacuum suction device are the same as for a forceps delivery. So when during the second stage of labor, the delivery does not progress as it should. The vacuum extraction device, also called Ventus, is currently more commonly used than a forceps. It usually requires less anesthesia and is associated with a lower risk of birth trauma to the mother and the baby. In a vacuum extraction delivery, however, we can only apply traction to the fetal head, while in the forceps delivery, we can also rotate the fetal head. In some cases, a forceps might be applied to rotate the fetal head, followed by a vacuum device to apply traction to the fetal head. To apply the suction device, the fetal head has to be located at least at station plus 2 cm or lower down. To use the suction device, the plastic or metal cup is placed in the midline of the fetal scalp, 3 cm anterior to the posterior fontanelle. The traction is applied during a contraction of the uterus to assist the progression of the fetal descent. The traction direction varies according to the progress of the descent of the head. We generally first apply a downward traction, followed by a horizontal traction, and finally an increasingly vertical traction. As soon as we are able to grasp the chin of the baby, we stop the suction, remove the vacuum extractor, and progress the delivery in a normal way. As we said, a vacuum extraction delivery usually causes less birth trauma than a forceps delivery. Another advantage over the forceps is also that less space is required as we do not have to insert two blades of the forceps. Also, a vacuum extraction device can be used when we do not know the exact position and attitude of the fetal head. However, the vacuum extraction delivery does not come without any risks. On the maternal side, there is the risk for soft tissue injury. This can be in the form of hematomas or lacerations to the wall of the vagina. For the baby, there is the risk of cephalohematoma, scalp lacerations, or an intracranial hemorrhage. If you want to know more about injuries to the fetal head, you can see our video on cephalohematoma, caput succedaneum, and subgaleal hemorrhage. All those complications can occur with a vacuum extraction delivery, but they are luckily rather rare. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.